taking St. Ambrose through the brand refresh that by now you've heard about through our launch and probably throughout the year as we've been working on it. And today I just wanted to take a moment to actually take you through some of the strategy that we've defined, a little deeper look into our verbal and our visual identity as well, and, and really give you a chance to understand the detail that's all uh, happened over the course of the year into where we've headed uh, and where we've landed today. But before I start, I just wanted to give you a little background about myself. Uh, myself and my husband, Chris, and our two children, Graham and Hartney, have been members of St. Ambrose for um, just over seven and a half years. We moved here to Minnesota from Ohio, where I had worked uh, at Interbrand, which is a global branding agency, for the last uh, 11 years prior to our move. In that branding agency, I did work like uh, I'm going to share with you today about St. Ambrose, for big companies like um, John Deere, FedEx, Sherwin-Williams, others like Burger King and Michael's, the arts and crafts store. But probably some of my favorites were those for nonprofits. And so again, similar work, brand refresh, brand updates, visual and verbal identity for, for uh, organizations like Susan G. Komen or St. Jude's Children's Research Hospital or Feeding America. So I was really thrilled when I had the opportunity to work with Father Peter and Betsy and others to really work on helping St. Ambrose bring forward a refreshed brand in a way that we can bring our entire community together. I would be remiss if I didn't mention the others who joined me on this journey in helping to support St. Ambrose through this process. So along with myself, Tara Malley, who herself is an insights expert, helped uh, the team through really making sure that we captured all the right information, all the details we needed from parishioners, from other stakeholders, to ensure that we were hearing the voices of our community and making sure that they're reflected in the strategy that you'll see here today. Brian Danaher also served us uh, as a graphic artist and really bringing to life the wonderful new identity that you see here and that you'll see throughout the, this um, video and this presentation. And then my husband also is a designer and also supported us throughout the process and, and mostly um, outside of the, the graphics and the creative that he did really just supported me in the time and the effort that I was putting towards this and taking care of our children. And I should mention that all of us are both parishioners and school parents. So I think we were really thrilled to be able to bring both parts of our experience into this process. Many of you might have been asking, you know, why would a, a Catholic community, why would a church or a school need a brand? And really our goal in this brand refresh was not to change anything about who we were or let go of anything that has been a, a critical part of our community for the last 20 years but really to strengthen and grow St. Ambrose and position us well for the future. And part of the reason that we did this and how we'll do that going forward is both to articulate and live the mission, our vision, our purpose for our community in a consistent and meaningful way. Today, we've been a little bit uh, disjointed. The school has looked and felt different and has operated um, sort of visually differently than our parish church and, and the community. So we wanted to align the look, the feel, and the messaging of all of our components, the church, the school, the ECEC, faith formation, and all the different elements of our community. Bring that together to make a stronger single sort of totality of who we are. And then of course, through the process, identifying opportunities that we can increase our relevance to both uh, our current parishioners and making sure that we're still, you know, the place that everyone wants to be here to worship. Um, but also for future parishioners. And so that really was like the key or the goal of what we were um, working towards through this whole process. This is a bit of an eye chart, but we just wanted to show you that this truly was a very rigorous process. We started this back in September of 2019 and really laid out all the different steps that we would take to get to this endpoint that we are here today. And even with the likes of COVID, <laughs> Um, putting a little bit of a, a wrinkle into our timeline. We're only maybe about a few weeks off from what we had planned originally. So really, you know, we worked through our strategy. We worked through sort of the architecture of how we use um, our brand or quote unquote our name um, throughout the various components of who we are. We worked with Brian and Chris on visual identity. And uh, I had the pleasure of working with Betsy Hand on some of our verbal identity work as well. And we're now to this point where we're starting to document all our standards, turn them into templates and tools that our community can use to really bring the brand to life. And of course, that's just one aspect of it. 
We'll talk about that later, but these are components that are visual and tactile perhaps, but how we live and how we bring our culture and our, our community to life is really the important part here. This just gives you a glimpse of kind of how strategy rolls into the components that people will see and feel um, later. As I mentioned, uh, we start with this strategy. It's really more for internal usage. It is all built off of what our purpose, our mission, and our vision is. So we really spent a lot of time digging into who we are and, and what, uh, what we believe and, and really trying to elevate that uh, as well as then defining a new set of values or maybe a refresh is probably a better way to say that. Um, define our personality. So, you know, who do we want to be when we bring ourselves to life, both visually and verbally? We took a large deep dive into, quote unquote, our audience. You know, what are the needs of our community, of our parishioners, our school parents, the students themselves, members of our community who might not be part of our parish, but do engage with us? And then what makes us different or unique? There are several Catholic parishes uh, in our general vicinity. So why would somebody choose to be a part of St. Ambrose? Spend a lot of time there. This all ultimately ladders up into what we would call a positioning and a brand promise. So a bit of like a, a brand story and, and re-articulation of our mission and vision. So I think as we move through this uh, video and you see more of the detail, I think it, it should feel very familiar to you. It should feel like home. It should feel like what you've known for the last 20 years, but hopefully also as a means of um, pushing us a little bit forward, um, providing us a bit more aspiration and inspiration to be even more than what we have been in the past. All of this strategy ultimately drives what we call our verbal identity, our tone of voice, our messaging, and our visual identity, all of the elements that you might see, like our logo, um, the fonts we choose, the photography that we choose, um, any graphics or colors that we use. Some of this might seem, again, um, silly or, or, or perhaps, you know, not really terribly relevant as we think about uh, a Catholic community. But really, in the end, these are all elements that if used again and again in a consistent manner, help reinforce and help people recognize who we are. So even with an icon or with a set of colors, people can recognize us in the community as, oh, that's St. Ambrose, and I know St. Ambrose, and I know what they mean, uh, or what they, you know, what they mean to me. And so all of these elements are what's used across all of the different touch points. And these are just a, a few here on the right side of the screen, websites, um, any campaigns that we might do for the school or a particular uh, event that we might be hosting like SawFest. Um, and, and other elements, um, even down to spirit wear, which hopefully um, we all now have an opportunity to wear proudly and be really excited about. I just wanted to give you a glimpse of uh, the effort that went into making sure that we heard the voices of the community. So uh, again, with Tara's help, we did both qualitative uh, and quantitative methods to get feedback and input from over 550 folks uh, within our community. Really excited about that. Um, through qualitative feedback, we gathered um, a, a ton of information and, and feedback and input from the school staff, from the parish staff, through the home and school um, committee, through the school advisory board, and we did host two parish stakeholder meetings with approximately 50 participants in those as well. So we got great you know, written and, and verbal feedback from folks in those settings. And then we actually did a quantitative survey. So we had um, during SawFest back last year, we um, surveyed individuals, uh, mostly were parishioners, but some outside, um, but members of the community to give us feedback as well. That was about 65 people. And we even had a survey where we collected uh, that information after mass, over 170 people responded to that. Thank you very much if you were one of those participants. And we coded all of that information and then finally, during the back to school nights, we had parents all give uh, feedback on post-it notes as well. And through coded information, uh, the coded feedback that we got there, we had over 580 unique answers. So really felt strongly that we heard the voice of the community. We saw great consistency uh, among everything that we heard across the board and really gave us confidence in what you're about to see here. So with that, let me dive into the outcomes of all the work of the past year and really where our quote unquote brand strategy lives and, and what we'll build off of in the way that we live what St. Ambrose is in the future. So I'll begin by talking about our culture. 
Our culture is really our values. It's our beliefs. It's what we hold most important, how we engage each other, how we engage the community, and really what you can as expect as a member of St. Ambrose or a visitor to St. Ambrose. So think of values as I talk about them and, and how we live, how we embrace um, who we are as a community. So I'll start with just the overarching um, statements. We developed five value, statement that, value statements that we believe really are uh, truly the core of who we are. So the first one is this idea of our Catholic identity and traditions being our foundation. And we really define that through this statement. We boldly embrace and share the teachings of the Catholic Church through our engagement, our worship, and how we know and live the example of Jesus every day. This we felt really strongly had to be the first and the core, you know, that, that no matter what we did, we always come back to that Catholic identity and those traditions and the foundation that, that we're built off of. We won't stray from that even as we embrace the future and we embrace new opportunity. The second is together we live and grow in faith. And we define this one as, in this Catholic community, this family and faith, we actively invite, welcome, connect, and support those who wish to know Christ, cultivating an environment where all can flourish and reflect Christ in their lives. Again, this notion of community is so important because um, together we are so much stronger than any individual can be. And in this, particularly in these days, uh, with the pandemic and everything else going around, uh, going on in our community, really feel strongly that this community is here to support and encourage and invite and welcome. The third value is this notion of education. We support lifelong faith journeys. Through our education programs, we meet individuals from birth to adults of all ages where they are and walk with them on their personal faith journeys as they learn and grow in Christ. You just see one critical element of our mission being that ability to bring people through their journey with Christ, take them on their journey, meet them where they are, and help them to know and love Jesus over their lifetime. The fourth value is we offer ourselves as the hands and feet of Jesus. Being of service brings us closer to Christ, inspiring others to know Jesus by offering our time and talent to each other, our parish, and those in need outside the St. Ambrose community. Again, service just being a critical component of who we are and how we bring our love of Christ into the world. And finally, we are all children of God. We are all made in God's image, seen, known, and always loved by him. We live his example with each other, finding grace within our differences. The diversity and uh, of our uh, community is so amazing and we just wanted to highlight here and kind of harken back really to this notion of community as well that all are welcome at St. Ambrose no matter who you are what your life stage is what your circumstances are you are welcome here and and we will respect e each other um, with that knowledge that we know that we were all made in God's image. Once we have our values defined, we also want to take a look at the other parts of our character. The other part of our culture is really ultimately our brand personality or who we are as a community. In the end, when we define a brand personality kind of within sort of a, a context of, of doing this work, we, we talk about it as a collection of the human characteristics that are attributed to a brand. So when you think about brands that you interact with every day, they each have kind of a little bit different take on how they come to you, how they engage with you as, a, as one of their consumers or customers. It's the same goes for our community. We wanna make sure that, that there's a way that we connect with people that is unique to us and is recognizable as St. Ambrose over time. So it'll guide our expression in a unique and authentic way. And so again, through all the feedback that we received, we define these five personality traits as being the St. Ambrose Catholic community. We define ourselves as vibrant, welcoming, nurturing, hopeful, and confident. And each of these has you know, a set of other words and a little bit of definition that helps you bring to life uh, the notion of what they really mean. So vibrant, we're energetic, lively, youthful, we're dynamic and joyful. Welcoming, we're approachable, we wanna be accessible, inviting, familial and friendly, warm and kind. 
nurturing, certainly we want to have a view to being compassionate and gentle, loving and caring, but also supportive and protective and accepting. Hopeful, um, you know, at, at one point we talked about optimism, but we felt that hopeful actually was more appropriate here and, and certainly within these times and will continue to be. And this shows an eagerness and embracing of the future, a freedom from fear that we, that we will walk together and we will figure it out and a positivity that comes with, with that hopefulness. And finally, um, confident, you know, we're willing to lead, we're willing to be hardworking, we're capable and we're certain and we're strong. So you can see how all of these um, kind of will come and go depending on the context or the situation that we're in, um, that as, a, as an individual parishioner, as um, a staff member, as a teacher within the school, but all of these embody who we are. And, and maybe you might think, well, we're not all of these today, and, and perhaps we aren't at all times, but the goal here is to give us um, an aspirational point to work towards. So this is what we're, we're driving towards and what we want to be in the future. And so this will guide, um, again, how we engage and how we interact with each other. And this is just then maybe a little bit of a description of each of those vibrant and ever present, joyful and motivating energy in each connection and experience. Welcoming, always friendly, inviting and approachable, engaging in a warm, kind and familial manner. Nurturing is a caring and supportive of all, encouraging in a gentle and protective way. Hopeful, always looking forward with an eagerness and positivity that creatively embraces challenges and opportunities and confident, calmly leading and serving the community with a certainty of faith and a surety of purpose. So again, much like I described, this is really how we define the personality and how coupled with those values that I just described really encompass who we are, what our culture is and the character of our community. And really then actually, I, I forgot about this, but it's critical faith-filled. So we, that is really the, the red thread, if you will, that every experience with St. Ambrose anchors in and reinforces. It goes back to that first value of the Catholic identity at our core. So we do not want to forget or lose that part of our personality is this feeling and this um, awareness and this sort of obviousness to everyone that we engage with that we are faith-filled. So when you think about kind of those underlying elements that I showed in that original pyramid, we have our culture defined here with our values and our personality. Um, I'm not going to go through the detail of what we discussed as the needs and the differentiators um, for our quote unquote target audience. Or, but all of that came together ultimately in what uh, we have here, which is our refreshed mission, vision and brand story. And so I'll start with the brand story, just giving you a little bit of of an emotional view to like how we want to start to, to live the St. Ambrose way. And, and I call it the St. Ambrose way. Many of you who maybe had children in the school would be aware of this, uh, the idea of the St. Ambrose way. It originated in the school um, with six principles written kind of in, in student language to help them understand how they should behave, how they should bring their culture to life within the school. But we really felt as we went through this process that, you know, through now the values and our personality, that this was the St. Ambrose way. And it wasn't meant to feel elite or, you know, like um, exclusive, but just a way to really embrace the beauty um, and the specialness of who we are as a community. So with that, I'll introduce you to our uh, brand story. And this is specific to the parish community and church because we do have an iteration for the school along with an iteration of the values for the school and also the ECEC and faith formation. But I'm only going to talk about the parish community church uh, and church here today and then I'll, I'll give a quick glimpse to the school. But um, know that there is detail like this for the other elements of our community as well that all center around the same idea. All right. At St. Ambrose, we proudly live the truth of the gospel and our Catholic tradition and teachings. Growing in faith through joyful worship, active service to our neighbors, and supporting each other as we humbly strive toward reflecting Christ in our lives. All are invited into the St. Ambrose family. We hope you will find your home here. 
As a parishioner or visitor, you are personally welcomed, respected, and cherished for who you are as a reflection of God's own image. Although large in size, we are intimate in spirit and engagement. We embrace open, authentic exchanges that broaden our understanding and bring us closer together. We encourage connection through ministry, programs, and service. And individual faith journeys intersecting in moments of education, spiritual formation, and sacramental celebration. A deeper relationship with Jesus is a gift we want for everyone. Through our many small groups, education programs, and outreach opportunities, every member can foster their unique connection with Christ. As a community, we further this calling to Christ through our children, strengthening their beliefs and preparing them for Christian adulthood. This is who we are. This is the St. Ambrose way. And this is just a view of that whole story here, um, together on one page, if you wanted to pause and be able to read it. But um, really just wanted to bring it to life through some of the wonderful visuals of our community and who we are and, and give you a, um, just um, a way to experience it other than just reading it on a page. So from, again, the values, from the personality traits, what we know is important to our community members and kind of that articulation of the brand story, we bring forward um, in a short version, both sort of our mission and our vision. Our mission is what we offer, kind of our reason for being. And here we've said that as we at St. Ambrose are a vibrant Catholic community supporting and nurturing each person on their journey with Christ through joyful worship, service to each other and our neighbors and ongoing opportunity, opportunities to learn and live in Christ. We support each member as they seek to deepen their relationship with Jesus. This is the St. Ambrose way. And the vision alternative to the mission is really what we aspire to, something to continue to push us further. So we articulate this as, as a thriving Catholic community, we create meaningful in, impact within and around our community with each individual and collective action by supporting those in need, sharing Christ in our everyday actions, or raising virtuous children, each of us can help others come to know Jesus as the way, the truth, and the life. And I won't read it, but we just have a shorter version here if anyone ever needed to use that in a setting where all of the, the um, more detailed words wouldn't fit. And again, these become sort of the anchor point. And I think, um, for those of you that have been a part of the parish for a very long time and know kind of the, the original articulation of the mission, it was really around worship, it was around outreach, it was around um, education and all those um, critical components of who we've always been still live on very strongly in who we are today. And so with that, I mentioned that there is a version for the school because we wanted to make it specific and usable for that um, part of our community when they are speaking directly to parents and to potential students. So I'll just read through um, for you the school version. Again, you'll, you'll hear the same themes, um, but through the lens of uh, the school. So their value statements are remain exactly the same. And these value statements are the same for the entire community. These do not change. This is a core part of who we are. But we did re-articulate the definition a little bit. So um, again, that notion of Catholic identity here for the school or for the ECEC, we would say we boldly embrace and share the teachings of the Catholic Church through our daily student engagement, our community worship, and how we live the example of Jesus every day. When we talk about community um, in this together we live in grown faith, we would say Together, we are a community where students and families find themselves at home, actively welcomed, connected, and nurtured to support their individual academic and faith journeys. When we talk about that notion of education and how we commit to educating and, and serving along um, faith journeys, here we would say from the youngest members of our ECEC to graduating eighth graders, we reinforce their faith through strong virtue-based education, walking with them as they learn and grow in Christ. When we talk about the service component, that is still a critical piece of our school and the community within um, both ECEC and uh, the St. Ambrose School. So being of service is core to who we are as a community, reinforcing an attitude of giving through students' time and talent to each other, our school, and those in need outside the St. Ambrose community. And finally, as we think about diversity and being inclusive, 
We are all made in God's image, seen, known, and always loved by him, inspiring how we accept, respect, and engage with each unique student and family. So again, hopefully you hear the same themes. They all um, come back to those value statements that are so important to us, but just give a little bit of a twist to make, make them relevant um, to our school families as well, some of which may not be part of our parish. So the, the story or the grand story that we brought forward around the school is this. At St. Ambrose School, we proudly embrace the truth of the gospel and our Catholic tradition and teachings fostering each child's beliefs and relationship with Jesus through our virtue-based education. Exceptional academics delivered through personalized experiences ensure each student receives what they need to be the best they can be. Deep parent involvement and rich connections between teachers and students of all ages reinforce understanding, accountability, and respect within our community. Our faculty and staff bring joy and caring to the school every day. Coupled with the natural fellowship developed among families, we create a loving home away from home for our students. Our small class sizes ensure each child is genuinely known and supported with teachers and staff serving as advocates for each student's unique experience. Along with inspiring intellectual curiosity, we are dedicated to nurturing students and families along their faith journeys. Our highly qualified faith-filled teachers guide a strong holistic education through instruction and personal example by living our Catholic values in the classroom every day. In turn, we are blessed with a respectful, kind, vibrant student body who strive to offer their best selves each day in service to each other, their teachers, families, and the broader community. This is who we are. This is the St. Ambrose way. So again, you'll hear those same themes that we've been talking about through this whole um, review of our strategy, but again, unique and specific to the school and a way for them to speak to not only a, a current families, but potential future families that want to join the school as well. And so their mission and the vision are articulated slightly differently, but also again, continue to harken back to that core. We at St. Ambrose School are part of a vibrant Catholic community, supporting and nurturing each child on their journey with Christ. Through exceptional academics, embracing each child's unique strengths and needs, and joyfully engaging in prayer and service, we take a holistic, virtue-based approach to student education and experiences. This is the St. Ambrose way. In the vision, as a thriving Catholic school, we create meaningful impact through each family we support and student we send into the world. By helping form the whole child, students are not only prepared well for the next level of education, but life as Christian adults living the St. Ambrose way. So with all of that, you hear and see the strategy coming to life. You can admit, hopefully envision how we live this every day, how through um, our programs, through our worship, through our services, um, even out on our parking lot on Sunday mornings, this is how we begin and continue uh, to, to bring this new refreshed uh, strategy uh, around and, and bring it to life. But now I want to kind of switch gears again. You've started to already see throughout as I've been flipping through slides. And if you watched our, um, our new video um, that launched our brand on the 9th, that uh, you've started to see our new visual identity. So it won't be uh, a surprise to you, but I wanted to give you a little bit of um, sneak peek behind the scenes, if you will, of how we got there. and the symbolism that actually is represented in this icon and, the, and part of our logo that you see here on the screen with this beautiful cross. The creative team, Brian and Chris, spent a lot of time really understanding and, and appreciating the components of who we are specifically as St. Ambrose. The shape of an octagon is actually quite um, an important element of our physical space. So the octagon is featured all throughout St. Ambrose in the church. Um, the church building itself is the shape of an octagon, the altar, the baptismal font. There's shapes on the sides of the pews. Maybe you haven't noticed, maybe you have. And the octagon represents redemption, the resurrection. It's regarded as a concluding triumphant eighth day of creation. So really an important shape to us. The rose window is also a central feature in our worship space. And uh, as a key focal point of both the interior and the exterior of the church, it represents the cross of Christ, but the Holy Spirit and the 12 disciples as well. And um, the little circles around the bottom are, are, you know, having received the Holy Spirit, 
they're being called to bring this energy and divine life to the world. And so we wanted to put that sort of spirit into um, our logo and our identity as well. And then throughout the environment, of course, we have the stations of the cross and the cross within those, um, each individual station are built on a simple graphic shape that's actually on the grid of an icon, uh, octagon. So it harkens back um, to that octagon shape as well. And so using that inspiration, um, the team pulled forward and, and Brian developed this, again, stunning um, cross icon for us. So the cross itself at the core is the symbol of the glory and resurrection of Jesus Christ. The octagon shape, and you kind of see it here, kind of within the body of the, of the cross, is inspired by our architecture, as I mentioned earlier. And then, you know, this radiating sort of cross as our center, it really is meant to evoke Christ as our center. It's emanating from the center of the cross. It speaks to our mission as baptized Christians to go and preach the gospel. So we felt like all of these elements that came together just really spoke very specifically to our mission, to our vision and our values and really represented our community very well. So you've seen this already. Um, you'll see how it now um, comes together and uh, in what we call a lockup with our name, St. Ambrose Catholic Community. I'll mention here too that there was actually quite a lot of dialogue and um, alignment across uh, many of the stakeholders that we spoke to that we wanted to make sure to maintain um, a spelling out of saint. So you'll see that throughout and we'll continue in our communications and the way we represent our community to hold saint um, as its full word. And this was important um, when, we, when the community was started um, as a, showing the reverence um, to St. Ambrose um, and also to not be confused, just very um, parochially, can't get that word out, but you know, to not be confused by street or anything else that somebody might see in the future. You'll also notice um, that we've removed the of Woodbury and there was a lot of conversation around this. Again, at the time 20 years ago when the parish was founded here in Woodbury, it was important to have that there as a, a differentiator between what had been the St. Ambrose and St. Paul previously. And we felt like now, you know, two decades into our journey as a Catholic community, that we were at a point where we're no longer just um, parishioners from Woodbury. We have um, individuals from all over uh, the, the um, Eastern suburbs and even into Wisconsin. And that it wasn't, it was no longer critical as part of who we were, that St. Ambrose Catholic community is truly who we are. And this is part of what we wanted to bring forward and, and simplify quite honestly, uh, as we, as we refresh and, and bring all of this work forward today. Also, you've probably noticed throughout our new color palette and beautifully, these colors are pulled from our environment. So the blue hues, even some of the browns and some of the little pops of yellow and red that we'll be using throughout um, all come from our environment. You can't see the rose window here very well, but we all know sort of the beauty of the different colors that shine through when the light is coming through on a Sunday morning. And so really use the inspiration of our physical environment and who we are specifically as St. Ambrose to bring that forward as part of our visual identity. This just brings it together in a snapshot. You see the colors. Um, we will have specific fonts or typography that we use both for our logos and then for those who are communicating on behalf of uh, the community, there are some other fonts that are used for the websites that might be used in emails and things of that nature. But again, you'll start to see a consistently used set of colors, fonts, and, and uh, imagery as well. Not the same images, but a style that really evokes um, energy and the passion that we bring, um, some candidness and, and just the, the joy that emanates from our community. So um, we have some wonderful photographers within our community who are just bringing beautiful images forward for us to be using going forward. This just gives you a snapshot of the potential ways in which our identity might come to life. These aren't all final versions of anything, but we just thought it was a fun way to show um, how we could have gear for the school, for the community, how we might come to life in social media, both for the school and for the parish. 
Um, again, now you start to see consistency among the two where they might look um, somewhat different today. And we're very excited that the new website has also launched and it's starting to bring forward a lot of the elements um, of the brand identity as well. And so just as a final um, component of what I wanted to share today was a verbal identity, a view to our verbal identity. And these are really guidelines for how we communicate across all the touch points or situations that we might have, whether um, we're speaking at a speaking engagement um, on behalf of the community, whether it's a PowerPoint for our back to school night, whether it is um, an email to um, school parents or to the parish, what comes out on our app, on our websites, what have you. The verbal identity is um, an articulation of our personality and, and how we communicate. So um, it, it's sometimes a tough concept for people to get their head around, but I, I like to talk about it as a way of just like centering ourselves before we write or communicate on behalf of St. Ambrose, because everything that we say should reflect back to our mission. And so there's two components of verbal identity. There's our voice and the tone that we're using. And the voice is what describes our organization, our community's personality. It's consistent, it's unchanging. It, it should remain the same um, over time. But depending on the context um, of what you're doing, if you're out in the community and you're engaging with folks that maybe don't know us, if you're talking to a student um, within the school, uh, the inflection, the emotion that we show might be different. Um, it adjusts to what's suitable for a particular piece of information or content that we might create or a particular message that we're sharing. So you can even think of us, even as human beings, when we uh, interact, we all have sort of our, our own personality that is unchanging, but depending on the context we're in, if we're at work or if we're at home, um, if we're with our children or with adults, our tone, um, just modulates or changes depending on um, that context. And that's really what these guidelines that you'll see here are helping us to do. So again, we can drive more consistency in the way that we communicate. So there's four elements that we bring forward within our verbal identity, that voice or personality that I spoke to. And uh, we describe St. Ambrose through the, the view of our personality traits. So you've seen these already, faith-filled, vibrant, welcoming, nurturing, hopeful, and confidence. We wanna make sure that those resonate and those are felt through the words that we choose. Our tone um, is really that emotional inflection that I talked about. It adjusts as we spoke about. Here we describe St. Ambrose as wanting to feel dynamic, approachable, supportive, positive and certain. So how, what word choices do we use? How do we articulate in, in our messaging these traits? And when we use language, we want to choose um, to express ourselves in our messages in a way that are active, so like pulls people in, that are familiar and engaging. And then the purpose of any message needs to be defined ahead of writing it really. Are we meaning to connect? Are we meaning to educate? Or are we meaning to motivate? Or it could be any combination of those. So I just wanted to dive quickly into a few of those. Or pardon me, I, we've left that. Um, if you want that, we're actually defining that and documenting that into um, our brand standards documents. That's a little bit probably too much detail. So I'm glad that I remembered to remove that. But um, this is just the overview. And I think, again, for those that are communicators on behalf of our parish or on behalf of the school, um, even volunteers, we'll be working with and helping people with training to help bring uh, some of these to life. Pardon me. The last piece that I just wanted to show briefly was that um, for the parish, um, like the overall community, for the school, ECEC faith formation, we did go through a whole process of documenting core messages and bringing forward um, specific statements that um, that can be used externally to uh, connect back to our values. And that is in its own document. Again, much too much information to pull forward in this uh, video, but this is just a snapshot of one of them. So how might we paint a picture of the community experience about our vibrant Catholic community here at St. Ambrose? So again, trying to articulate in words that people can engage with um, around our mission and vision. So we worship in joyful communion. We provide inspiring liturgical experiences. We invite broad participation in mass and adoration. We create communal connections that nurture a spirit of love. 
we are forming Catholics with a greater understanding of mass. Just, you know, those aren't always going to be the specific messages used, but these are just examples of how we bring forward worshiping and joyful communion. One of the other sort of pillars of our core messaging is this idea of nurturing individual growth. Again, that idea of education, providing faith development opportunities for all ages, encouraging mercy in relationships, modeling examples of an active prayer life, both uh, through ourselves at home and through school, challenging to evangelize as disciples of Christ. And then finally, that notion of service, you know, serve as the hands and feet of Jesus. We heard that a lot and really wanted to make sure that came forward in a very clear and bold way. And we can do this by encouraging engagement in acts of service, finding purpose in connection with others, creating opportunities to unite as many parts of one body, supporting all to identify and share their gifts with others. So again, we have these as ways that our communicators um, can bring forward, they can spark other ideas, other messaging that they might wanna do, but they're here as a reference and a, and a support system for those who are bringing um, St. Ambrose to life. So that is really all I had. I just wanted to spend this last moment here um, saying a huge thank you to the steering committee who stayed with us through the course of really a full year, full academic year at least. And despite COVID, um, many people were actually able to uh, participate via Zoom meetings and provide feedback as we got into the final stages of developing um, both the strategy and the verbal and visual identity. So many thanks to all of these individuals for their support and their input and their candor throughout the process. We would not have gotten here without you. So with that, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen and just say again, you know, um, a, a many thanks to everyone who participated, who gave their input, who um, shared of their time and talent as we pulled all of this together. I know I felt very honored to be able to use my experiences from the past and, and, and pull that forward on behalf of our community. And I'm just really excited about how we begin um, to further activate this new refreshed brand. Again, I don't feel like this is so far from who we are, but it's inspirational and aspirational enough to maybe push us into future things that um, perhaps we hadn't envisioned uh, to date that could be a part of who we are as a community. And of course, um, right at this moment, it's difficult to get together and maybe start to bring to life some of these things, but it's certainly um, in our future. And I know Father Peter is very excited about how we start to really bring forward our values and that personality and our, our mission and vision um, as part of St. Ambrose Catholic community. So with that, um, thank you for listening. And um, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out through um, the parish, church, or uh, office, pardon me, or the school, and I'm happy also to provide any further information that you might have. Take care, everyone. Be well.